I guess, I don't know, in order to be um, successful, you've got to reflect on the journey you've come and what you could have changed and what you could have done differently and apply that to, you know, your life ahead of you. And I think you're only going to get that from self-reflecting and being honest with yourself. The black and yellow with her counter-attack and her high up and steps through the defence. She manages to find the support of Gail Broughton. My dad will be at every training, so they'd always look out for my dad. Could hear him on the sidelines. He was just so proud of whatever... Anything I did, he was always there supporting, no matter if it was rugby, um, academia, he was just proud to be my father. In 2021, I was in the ICU for about four weeks. In one of my pre-season games, I sustained a, a high tackle on my neck and it compressed my kidneys, which led to my kidneys not functioning and having renal failure in my kidneys. I was probably out of action for a good eight weeks and then it really made me think like, you know, if I do get a serious injury, what's what's my next option and I didn't have any so yeah, I had to just surround myself by Fano that were willing to pick me up out of those dark places. Motiti to me is my home, but it's really different lifestyle. You probably go over there and you see young kids driving cars, which is probably not the norm. Where's Mama? Did she park around there? Yeah. My nanny that's over there, she taught me a lot of life lessons about being proud of where I come from, who I am, um, being proud to be Māori, and we had a lot of fun over there. And he was only a baby when she started going on the boat. And I was paddling it out one day, these kids were all on the boat and I fell off. And they, <laughs> they were in the boat by themselves, screaming, <laughs> while I was in the water. <laughs> Sharon would ring me up and scream at me on the phone about something I'd done with the kids, and I'd say to her, well, they're still alive, aren't they? You've got them back. <laughs> and then the next holiday, she was ringing me up because these kids were playing up to come back again. <laughs> You know, uh, when my father passed away, I used the ocean a lot to, you know, clench myself and, you know, let go of a lot of hurt and pain. So I do the same now as use the ocean to, uh, you know, refresh or as a recovery tool for rugby. I spend a lot of time thinking about um, my future and, you know, what if this is going to be my time on rugby, what am I going to do? And I went back to my values and what I'm passionate about, working with people and I guess the opportunity to be a police officer um, was first on my mind. I'm really um, passionate about, you know, working for people and um, with the police there's so many different avenues that, and pathways you can lead into. If she can play rugby league, rugby, netball, basketball, she can do anything. I'm so happy she's going to be a police woman. I love it. Yeah. We all know that, you know, behind every success story, there's always um, hard work, dedication, and the love and support of your partner. And, um, and help you that you just want you to. I guess it's a big, it's a big thing, you know, wanting to put yourself up for a police officer. It's, you know, you never know if you're going to go home the next day to your family. So, the, the really supportive is really all I can say.
many challenging conversations that I've had to have with coaches and, you know, the battle that they fought to keep me in rugby um, was quite difficult. Women's sport, especially rugby, is only just evolving and now with the full-time professional contracts and uh, me not, you know, choosing that pathway for the first time was probably a big decision for me to make, knowing that they're going to be full-time athletes this year. I'm quite proud of you, actually. A bit nervous, you know, because you never quite know what happens out in the community sometimes, but, um, you know, I'm proud of you. I can't imagine her being a teacher. <laughs> Always imagined her being um, working with people. For me, locally in Taranaki, it's a small community, so those relationships that you're able to build, you know, in two different perspectives is a huge passion of mine. So, And not only that, they're just really supportive of national sport. She's lucky she's got Cherie there to, you know, just stand beside her and, um, yeah, which is... Which makes me feel better. So club rugby was against each other, yeah, and then we, yeah, met playing rugby. Initially, I was a bit, oh, you know, oh, maybe wait a few years, get some life experience. Um, but you know, she's proved to me time and time again with rugby that she's up for the challenge and um, she can hold her own in, in situations and stuff like that. Yeah, I think Eddie will be fine. I think she'll be she'll be awesome as a cop. Yeah. <laughs> I think we need to encourage more females because I think we're um, sometimes better at communicating. Um, we can talk more than, than just get in there and sort it out. And, you know, sometimes we just need to spend a bit more time on things, which I think women are quite good at. So I think we definitely need more women in, in the police and definitely more Māori women. My papa passed away three years ago, so um, I guess we didn't really have that one-on-one -on -one conversation that, you know, this is what I want to do. If it's rugby, if it's not rugby, he he's just proud of anything that us kids achieve, so. See